The President of the Republic of Zambia, His Excellency Edgar Chagwalungu, has stated often that agriculture should become the mainstay of the Zambian economy. This is very possible given the natural resources and market position in the region. Exploiting the local, regional and international markets requires smooth trade. However, trade faces impediments that have slowed down its development. Various studies have highlighted some barriers to regional and international trade. These include tariff, a non-tariff barrier such as import quotas, voluntary export restrictions, and subsidies. Other barriers we can mention are domestic content requirements, poor regional infrastructure, and generally, lack of harmonized trade regulations. However, very few studies have been done to understand barriers to local agricultural trade in the agricultural value chain. Basically, you know, our research uh, focused at understanding uh, the barriers to movement of agricultural produce from the area of production to the areas of consumption and processing. You know, let's take for example, you know, we have agricultural districts, uh, for example, Kalomo, you know, looking at what barriers affect the movement of grain from those areas of production to areas, to districts like Lusaka, which is a processing uh, district as well as low consumption. This documentary looks at these local trade barriers and suggests ways of overcoming them. So, what are some of these barriers? We talked to the farmers, we talked to the truckers, we talked to the traders. Uh, basically, I think you know one of uh, the factors or the barriers which uh, was identified by these three actors was the issue of uh, uh, feeder roads, movement of crop from the farms to the bombers. You know they were actually saying that the feeder roads are not up to standard. They actually affect the movement of trucks and so forth. The other issue, you know, that was uh, highlighted by the stakeholders was the issue of, um, you know, grain levy. The challenge which um, stakeholders were finding in some district was that, you know, this levy is paid twice on the same uh, produce. You know, for example, if farmers are bringing the crop into the bomber, they would actually pay that levy, okay? And then when the traders buy this crop and, you know, try to take it to another district, again, they would actually pay a levy, you know, to that same uh, uh, produce. And this basically was adding a cost, you know? Uh, and uh, usually, you know, the one who pays for that cost is a farmer, okay? So a farmer would pay you know, for, for, for the cost of a levy and also pay for the cost of transporting the produce uh, from uh, the farm to the bomber. Okay? Then uh, another uh, issue which uh, we found you know, during our study uh, is the issue of um, uh, you know, roadblocks. You know, uh, these could be, uh, you know, roadblocks mounted by the Zambia police as well as roadblocks um, uh, uh, mounted by the councils. Really, stakeholders were complaining that there are too many roadblocks and they actually add to the cost of doing business. Moving grain from farm gate to the market is one difficult undertaking due to poor state of feeder roads. What a lot is done in improving highways and urban roads. Most feeder roads in the countryside remain in a deplorable state, making grain movement difficult and expensive. The roads are very bad. 
in such a way that it becomes very difficult for us to, at times, to, to travel from the place of from Katanino to transport the maize to, to the Primboji. Yeah, it's very, very bad. Yeah. And uh, you find that in the rainy season, you can't even travel because of the, the, the same bad roads which are, which are found there. Yeah. Ah! Imise wonga mise woena umo tu yamkushita ayama taba yari vya ona ika sana na gukwendo kula endo kufuma kuri umo mapango umo tu yokuisa mkufika pano makafia ya kuare somu ino umo abo umo ense shabantu but imise wola iki uku yari ona ika ona ike chako bati na gu truck driver kusenda so ala kuri pirisha no kuri pirisha ita woko tule tele kuno imise wona ona ika sana Uli ya mataba ni umo ina mpanga so Dari kuli nako shona inga mwa kulo dia kuli nemzo nako shona iko kuchilago nevi apa ulimuta kwa na wino kumi mzo shona dia ona ika apa ni mbele pali fe na ngwa thirty kilometers wala inda two hours mla ndwa mzo hobi so ngana ulo onga tauli wa tauli enda wino ifi ya konto kwa kumoto kwa ofi nisho ni shamba problem wa foot moto kwa yawasa kati ya konto kichi imbifu mama dipla ifi ya fuma kwa ofi ne ulai hata friku due to bad feeder roads some grain dealers prefer setting bays along the main roads or town centers and leave farmers with a coarse burden of transporting the grain. Isaka limo kufumia mumpanga. Bala kwe bat 15, 15 kuwache isaka linga limo. Kufumia mumpanga kuleta pano. Mwamfwanyi. Afumia kudia farmer, ba mulipilisha kubama miyoto ka 15 kuwache kuleta pano. No mbanga niwe uile shiti la kudia. Wajite la kudaba kuli pisha na 15 kwa chakai di kwa ba mumpango mwa track te tingi le ni utu tu nono tu mami yoto kuto nono tu utu yamu hello track ili ya kalambela te tia mumpango so kula boku bonfia tu tu nono watemwa tinsha shire pano pasenta na lamu kushira mumpango mutadi no manishinga wala po sa wile shire la mataba mumpango mutadi lo wabonfia kuisa kani mwalimu kuchita 15 kwa chadi mu na 20 kwa choko kudi ukubwa le punda tu kwa fungu lo after machi machi ya Kuya kwa fungu leba wachite saka limo 20 kwa wacha kuleta pano. Noma ni nishifinshu wachita. Nishitapati. Local grain trade barriers also come in form of tariffs. Such as the grain levy, targets, and way bridges. These are perceived by stakeholders in grain trade as tariff barriers impending smooth local grain business. Grain levy... Uh, uh, I would say it's it's uh, it's local government law. Can you chingalu kuria chama tabo mtengo ri fiye buin? There is no problem. Then in Gamlea, for example, we're saying a target, one fifty per year track yons, one fifty. So for example, on Gandhi of Magundola, Ndeya Kurusaka, na lali pira almost pata tuama target, ni four fifty o kuya fi, na kubwe la foot four fifty, nine hundred. Tuwa kabola matu geta ya. Eh, ama wani fifty, kuzwa not tragi wii nkagu kuru saga. Mm -hmm. Eh, but that three hundred kwacha. Mm -hmm. Uti di joge kuno. Ino di guisi ya three hundred kwacha, ndi guisi ya drive, ndi pe, ndi pe cancel. Kunyina ajija hala peni mende drive. Kamba u cancel tu badrama four hundred and fifty kwacha. Pe truck. Pe truck. Ngo maringo tu badera ayo. Aba kwa tako fio buwashia sano uo mbwene, niba cancel. One wa kanso kuno, bala tulipirisha na ngupanga, babi lipa kuiso kufumoko tufuma. Mwamona, ba kanso, nga tuafuma kuri ya kumyesu, kuchirundu boda, tulipira kanso. Pesaka limo wanu kwacha, wanu kwacha, wanu kwacha. Nga tulipira kanso ya kumyesu kuri ya kusaudheni, kufuma kuri ya. Ukuisa afika, pali kanso, oko ili kanso mbia, papa chiri, paka fiwe hapa. Na pena bala foo kutulipirisha na pena kanso, na pena tulalipira kanso. So inenda kwa ta mwe saka mikori ya kwebati. Usheba kanso mnuo mchalo chesu icha Zambia. Tuwa kwa ta vanga. Denifuti poenda kusaka tilipira levi. Depending na masaka wenu wanyamula. Because they are saying the bag is one kwacha. Grain levy is the most complained about among the traders. About one kwacha is charged per 50 kg bag. But how important is grain levy to the councils and how is it utilized? As a local authority, the core reason of our existence is service provision. Provi service provision is vast. Maintenance of roads, bridges, and other things that we provide 
to the members of the public. Now, for us as a local authority to function, we need matching resources. Green Levy is one of the resources that we are using to render a service. Uh, Green Levy per se, our main stay here in Mpongwe, town council is agriculture. People are amassing wealth out of Mpongwe soil. Now, having said that, I should state that this is law. Us as local authorities, we are agents of central government. Whatever we get from these same farmers, even from Green Levy and other sources of revenue, is ploughed back to the community. We can survive as a local authority for not getting any revenue. Uh, the current law, as at now, if we look at the, the 2008 Statute of Instruments number 37, it's the one which gives us the impetus or the mandate to collect this levy. Well, of course, we arrive to the fact that uh, it's costly. Someone has to buy seed, fertilizer, you have to do the weeding, pay cash, to, we, we, we arrive to that fact. But law is law. The 50 kg bag, one kwacha. Surely, look at the variance. People are selling others, 70, 70. But when we, just one kwacha, people are complaining. Where do we get extra revenue to clear up the streets, to sweep the streets, pick up garbage uh, from the markets, dispose of, of unclaimed bodies at our expense as a local authority? So, grain levy is not something illegal, it's a very legal. If we are to be very strict, we're even going to charge you more. Because people are making colossal sums of money. They have constructed houses. But as a council, here is my treasure. I can highlight how much we are charging, how much we even realize maybe per month. And our peak period is even now. Maybe for Pongo Town Council, it may be a bit unique. We have almost 29 commercial farmers here in Pongo. 29. 29. On elements of feeder roads. Um, maybe as in, as in Pongo Town Council, for the first time, I think, since it's established in 1997, we are working very well with the farmers. If I tell you, even the way you have come, I'm not trying to disseminate information, but those are very cardinal issues that you are bringing out. We've maintained just this year, in collaboration with those same farmers we are talking about. Previously, that never used to happen. For instance, I'll give you an example. I've maintained St. Anton Road, 60, 16 kilometers, where the council released some equipment, employees, and our partners did the same. Others contributed fuel, others paid allowances to their employees. We used our machinery as partners. This is just one example I'm giving. The other one is 23 kilometers of Chapel Road. Different councils have got different sources of revenue. And for us as um, Kushi Town Council, Green Levy is one hour of our main sources of revenue. For us, instead of charging the, the figure of 0 0.90 ngwe per bag, 50 kg bag of maize, we have been charging half of that, which is 0 0.45 ngwe. And this is to allow farmers, um, you know, pay the, 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 this levy without any problems. And what we have encountered is that um, people still complain despite have us having reduced this amount by half. These are the monies that we collect as the council, and these are the monies that assist us uh, offer the necessary services to the communities. The problem that we have is that um, when we collect these monies in the farming block, communities in the farming block expect that this money should be utilized just within the farming block, but that is not the issue. Because our mandate as a council goes beyond the farming block. We are supposed to offer services even to the remotest part of the district. And even where we do not collect such kind of levies. So these are the issues that have been going on. But um, I want to mention that uh, we haven't had major challenges in terms of collecting this and people are actually paying at respective points. The Indaba Agriculture Policy Research Institute findings reveals that the dependency on grain levy differs between urban and rural districts. There are different sources of, you know, revenue for these districts. You know, the urban districts, they have a variety of sources of revenue. 
And normally, you know, the agricultural activities is not much in the urban districts, okay, as compared to the rural districts. And that's why, you know, you, you, you see that, you know, the urban districts, they don't even pay much uh, uh, to looking you know, for that uh, crop levy because they have other sources of um, uh, income as compared to the rural ones. Some traders cover long distances in search of better prices. They complain of being child grain levy in a district they pass through. However, councils clarify that when you pay once from the district of origin, the receipt issued should cover you up to your destination. There are some traders who unfortunately who want to be who want to be very clever. They might have tried to dodge our um, our checkpoint or our booth. So at the point that they reach Serenja, Serenja will request for the receipt from Mukushi. So if they have no proof that that maize is coming from Mukushi, Serenja will charge. Just like if they are passing through our checkpoint as Mukushi, if they do not produce a, a, a receipt showing that that maize or any documentation showing that that maize is actually coming from Serenja and that it has already been levied, then we will levy them at Mukushi because they have to give us proof that the maize is coming actually from another district. So there's no point at which farmers are, uh, have been made to pay in Serenji as well as Mukushi and then they also pay at Kapiri Mposhi. That is not true. As long as one has the good documentation, then the receipts showing that actually they've already paid the crop levy or a grain levy from where they're coming from, then they're allowed to pass through. We have heard and seen some of the barriers that impaired local grain trade among various players in the sector. So, what are some of the recommendations to some of these barriers? From the study which uh, we did, um, there are three key recommendations. The first um, uh, recommendation is with regard to physical infrastructure, focusing more on the feeder roads. Okay? This came out very strong you know, from the players, you know, the stakeholders we interacted with that feeder roads are not really up to standard and they are affecting the movement of agricultural produce. So we are really you know, urging government to seriously look into this. I'm happy, I can actually commend government. You, know, you heard during the budget presentation where Honorable Felix Mutati mentioned that the government has secured 200 million US dollars mm -hmm. Uh, to renovate and maintain the feeder roads. I think that's the way to go. So basically, you know what we are trying to, to say that uh, let that money go to improve the feeder roads in the productive you know, districts of Zambia. Because that will enhance farmers, traders participating in markets. Uh, then the second um, uh, key recommendation you know, from our study um, was with regard to roadblocks. Yes, I think uh, there again, no government has to take it no seriously, because with roadblocks, you know, from our study and from the views of the stakeholders, it came out very strong that it actually adds to costs, and it also adds to um, to delays in the movement of our cultural produce from areas of production to processing. So basically, you know, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Commerce, uh, Ministry of Home Affairs, they have to really discuss and, you know, uh, streamline these roadblocks. You know, in our study, you know, we actually discovered that within a stretch of 100 kilometers, you would find more than five roadblocks. That is enormous. You know, it actually increases you know, the time 
you know, their actual produce take to reach area of um, uh, processing. So these ministries, they have to look into this issue and try, you know, to streamline these roadblocks, you know, just leave critical, you know, uh, checkpoints, not having so many roadblocks on the, on the uh, road. Uh, then there was also the issue of double taxation, you know, that came out, you know, very strong uh, when we interacted with the, our stakeholders. Double taxation really, you know, comes in where, you know, the, the farmer is bringing, uh, the farmer in the same district is bringing the crop into the bomber, you know, there are checkpoints in the peripherals, that crop is taxed. And again, you know, when the trader buys the crop, as he's taking that crop, into another district, that same crop is taxed, you know. So that's where the double taxation comes in. So for the council, they should focus on taxing the crop that is leaving the district, not the crop that is coming into the district. That will help us you know, sort out the double uh, taxation I talked about. If let's say the, the council is focusing on taxing the crop that is moving out, it would actually encourage value addition within the district, okay? Um, then um, let me also not take this opportunity you not know, to talk about, uh, you know, ZAMES. ZAMES is a quasi-government institution that has been created. I think from our discussions as, as I have, you know, we have said let ZAMES be fully operationalized. How can this happen? No, we are encouraging the private traders to start trading on the Zames, you know, commodity exchange. You know, the benefits are so many. You know, there is price discovery. There is also enhanced quality of grain because you now when uh, you are trading on that platform, the commodities you are buying or the grain you are buying from that commodity have been certified are of good quality. So that platform is a very good platform that we're actually you know, going to uh, strengthen you know, the marketing system of Zambia. And I think you know, I can also say, let FRA you know, operate or do its business through that platform. That way, you know, that platform will be fully operationalized. Our researchers in the field, they did discover that farmers were complaining bitterly that their cost of production has been going up because of the transport in terms of bringing the inputs to their farms and also taking out the outputs to, 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 to the markets. Really our core, you know, um, in terms of recommendation is to really urge the government to invest more in the rural road network so that they are accessible and that will significantly reduce the cost of production in terms of the inputs, you know, uh, distribution and also the output coming to, to, to the market. That, that's one. Coming to issues of the local taxes, you know, the council, you know, taxes, I think what is required to be done in this, in this uh, area is one, rationalizing uh, the, 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 the tax component as regards to agriculture products movement, or indeed what happened at some point where the government decided that for what they think they would lose from the tax collected from agricultural products, that amount of money was given directly by government to the councils. So if these two can be rationalized, can be addressed, the cost of production and marketing issues of the small scale farmers will be reduced and that would increase productivity by the small scale farmer. The target you pay is definitely much cheaper than if the road was very bad and you have punctures throughout, you know, uh, as you move. As long as the government is going to say, I've charged you so much, this money that I'm charging you especially goes to maintenance or indeed going to your rural road where you are, every Zambian will appreciate that. We would like to see that the money that's collected at the targets is actually used for its intended purpose, and that's maintenance of that road or creating 
you know, uh, new, new, new roads. True, it's an added cost. But I can assure you, if you balance the two, I'd rather have a toll gate and pay than have a bad road. So I think it's good for this country to have these targets and make sure that we have a very improved road network throughout the country. So this particular research was to see how best these impediments can be rationalized, can be addressed in order to increase the productivity or production on the other hand.